And our next speaker, and then one of the things we're really highlighting here is we just uh, had this building constructed two years ago, close to two years ago, and I keep calling it the building that Judy built. Uh, she won't accept that because this is all NASA money, but uh, she spearheaded putting in this life sciences building. She is our division chief in uh, Judy Hayes. Would you please come up? And Judy will tell us a little bit about how microbiology fits into all of this and some oh, of the yeah. other things we've got going on here. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, and thank you to Nature for allowing us to host um, host this conference in our new facility. Uh, we're thrilled to have you all here. Um, and with that, I won't take up too much of your time. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Welcome You to NASA and tell you a little bit about our organization and what goes on in this, in this building. Um, this is where we're headed. This is actually a picture of Mars from the Curiosity rover in 2014, or a picture of Earth from Mars uh, from the Curiosity uh, rover. And uh, it's a long way from here. And when you're there, uh, this looks like a star. And when you're here, Earth looks like a star. So once we start sending humans, um, that's what Earth will look like. So what do we do here at NASA? Um, we are here to uh, successfully enable humans um, to to go to go into do space exploration, and we look at things. We look at every space mission, and we know that space is a hostile environment. We look at those hazards depending on the uh, mission that we're we're taking on, and we know that there's altered gravity or radiation or isolation issues, cl a closed environment and uh, the distance of Earth. Those are the hazards that we're assessing. And when it, within each of those hazards, we look at different human system, what we call human system risks. And there's a variety of those. I'll talk a little bit more about them. And then our deliverables, our job is to keep the crew healthy. And that includes developing new technologies, looking at countermeasures and treatments, and other health standards. In doing that, we have bucketed about 30 human system risks. Actually, I think we're adding one more concern here soon related to those hazards. I won't go through these in detail, but we bucket them and that's where we spend our energy and our money is to, is to look at how we can mitigate the risks and how we can manage, manage those risks, no matter the destination, whether it be in low Earth orbit on the International Space Station, or on the moon, or Gateway, or on the way to Mars and back. Um, I, won't, I won't bore you with this, but we actually take a hard look at each of these types of mission, whether it be in low Earth orbit or going to Mars, and we actually monitor our um, evidence on whether or not the crew uh, or sending the crew to these destinations is, is, of, is of a health risk to them or a performance risk. A red risk in a nutshell is bad. We're, we still have a lot to figure out there. The green risks are good. We've either got the risk mitigated, developed new countermeasures, um, and we're ready to go in those areas. The yellows are either we need to do more work or we have some uh, accepted mitigation. So this is just a tool for us to share with our management on how ready we are to go. What we do in this building, we do a couple of things. This is a, uh, an interdisciplinary facility. We have, um, it's 118,000 square feet and it is divided into um, a human performance wing and a bioanalytics wing. But mainly what's common in all of these folks is that we do research and we also do what we refer to as operations or some clinical work. Our, our research is really about human adaptation and the health of the crew and the health of the, of the vehicles. And we do, uh, we do peer reviewed research. Some of it ends up in the Nature Journal when we're lucky. Uh, and we assess human system risks. We validate the treatments and countermeasures here through research and um, and fortunately, we're able to share either through conferences like this or through publications like Nature on our findings. Our operational we research is we do some of the medical tests, the clinical tests that flight certify the crew for flight. Um, and then we assess them throughout the course of the mission or the health of the vehicle throughout the course of the mission. Um, we do an awful lot of astronaut training here. We set standards and requirements. 
um, develop, test, and deliver the countermeasures and prescriptions. We do a lot of environmental monitoring, which you'll hear more of this week. And um, we, our folks confirm flight readiness especially when it comes to water quality, air quality, um, and toxicology and microbiology. And we're in the process, which we haven't done in 40 years, in developing a new spacesuit for, for, the, for the advanced uh, exploration missions. So we're in the process of, of helping to just design uh, the advanced spacesuits. And of course, we see in future growth areas some autonom autonomous technologies because as you get further away from Earth, the less we can help a crew member on a day-to-day -day basis. And then, of course, genomics and precision medicine. You'll hear a little more about some of this. What we do in this building, it's flexible. It's meant to be flexible and reconfigurable. Um, we have a huge 8,000 square foot high bay where we do a lot of human performance studies. We have some re reconfigurable open uh, bay areas in the wet labs. We have the National Archive sample repository, freezer storage here of all the astronaut samples from day one of, of human spaceflight. We have some shared resources in micros microscopy, tissue culturing. We have shared force plates and exercise and strength measures. We have, of course, advanced conference rooms and huddle rooms, and we share this not only with our folks, but with visiting scientists and students. In fact, we have about 50 students running around here this week. Um, I will share with you that last night, our crew just returned from the space station. They've been in here today. They've been in here last night as soon as they returned to Houston. And so we use this quite a bit, especially looking at crew health and monitoring their recovery. So, so if you get lucky, you might run into somebody. They land in Kazakhstan. We've they fly, they get here within about 24 hours. We have one of the NASA jets pick them up, fly them home. <laughs> it's a long flight, it's a long flight. Um, we actually, they'll refuel in Scotland or Norway. We have a team there that's gonna te test them part way home. And then, they, and then they're here within 24 hours. We start testing them. I think they came in about 9.03 last night into Ellington Field. Our folks had samples. Probably Brian probably got some samples. He's probably been working all night on them. And, uh, and folks here that were testing the crew all night. So that's what we do. We get excited when we actually get crew home. So we're happy to have them here. And uh, a little bit about the laboratories and our capability here in, the lab, in, the, in this laboratory. If you have any questions or want to see any part of this, please don't hesitate to, to ask one of us, for sure, or Mark, and he'll make sure that, that we can set up uh, some time for you to see some of these facilities um, sometime throughout the week. And with that, thank you again for coming, and I'll hand this over to Mark. <laughs>